Bulgaria is a popular destination for young tourists from Germany because of the beach at Varna. A beach on the Black Sea they call the Golden Strand. Think of it as Europe's spring break destination. Varna is the seaside resort where in 2014 went missing a healthy, handsome, single young German man. His name is Lars Mittank. <music> Lars Mittank had been working for seven years at the coal-fired power plant in Wilhelmshaven. He traveled to Varna with four friends. One was a former high school classmate. Their hotel was a posh resort, and they had all-inclusive reservations, all food and all drinks on the house. But Lars was eating very little. He would completely skip breakfast and have only soup or a salad for lunch or dinner. One night, they ended up at the wrong saloon. It was the summer of the World Soccer Cup, and Lars got into a confrontation with a group of German soccer club fans. But Lars kept his cool. He backed off, and the other side had no argument for that. The soccer fans left the club shortly thereafter. Lars and his friends were the last ones to leave the pub. Then the five young men went to a fast food restaurant. Lars was waiting for them on a bench outside. When his friends returned, Lars was gone. They went back to the hotel, hoping to find him there. When they awoke the next morning, Lars had returned. He said he was accosted by some local men who were speaking either Bulgarian or Russian. During the scuffle, his ear got hurt. He said these strangers were hired by the Bavarian soccer club fans with whom he had argued in the saloon. When it came time to leave, his friends offered to stay behind with him, but Lars said no. He would be okay. He would take a later flight. On leaving the hotel, they took separate taxis. His friends left for the airport and Lars for the hospital. A specialist at the hospital in Varna, Dr. Boris Nadanov, diagnosed a serious eardrum problem. He recommended surgery. Lars did not want his surgery performed in Bulgaria. Dr. Nadanov wrote him a prescription for antibiotics. At a pharmacy down the street from the hospital, Lars picked up the prescription. Still on foot, he went looking for cheap accommodations. Unbeknownst to Lars, the area near the hospital had a reputation as a bad neighborhood. He checked into the local hotel color. The facade says, family hotel, but one source describes it as a dodgy place. Lars used his cell phone to make calls to his mother, Sandra, beginning at 11.50 p.m. He told her when he checked into the hotel, he was frightened by the clerk at the front desk. He asked Sandra to cancel his credit card. He told her he was leaving the Hotel Zofort immediately. The hotel staff confirmed that he left with all his luggage in the middle of the night. Sandra received another phone call at 3 a.m. Lars refused to raise his voice above a whisper. He said four men were following him. He said he was hiding above them. Minutes later, he sent a text message to his mom, asking her if she was familiar with the antibiotics he was prescribed. Two hours later, Lars was flagging down a taxi. Another passenger in the cab, as well as the cab driver, both reported that Lars looked like he was sick. The taxi arrived at the airport, 
at 6 a.m. He called his mother again from the airport. In her home in Wilhelmshaven, Sandra went online and purchased return tickets for her son. She also convinced him to see the doctor at the airport before he got on an airplane. He called his mother back. He told her that men were still after him and that they might not let him leave by plane. He feared they also might prevent him from getting on a bus. He was examined by Dr. Kosta Kostov. The examination was interrupted when one of the airport's employees came to talk with the doctor about pending renovations. He was a construction worker, but he was wearing a uniform that made him look like a security officer. Lars bolted from the doctor's office, leaving his luggage behind. He ran out of the terminal. Lars Midtank circled the airport property, desperately seeking a way out. He climbed over the fence, which was just over eight feet tall and topped with barbed wire. He disappeared into the adjoining field, which according to witnesses was full of sunflowers. And he was never seen again. Learn more on Facebook at Findit Lars Mittunk.